The infamous alleged cracked video is apparently in the hands of Toronto police. And yet Toronto Mayor Rob Ford says he has no plans to step down from office. All this as candidates start throwing their hats into the ring to run for the city's leadership. Joining us now for the latest from City Hall and what stands next for municipal politics in Ontario's capital city. Marcus G, Toronto columnist with The Globe and Mail. Sue Ann Levy, Queen's Park columnist, former City Hall columnist with the Toronto Sun. Ivor Tossel, author of The Gift of Ford. And John Lawrence, City Hall columnist with Spacing Magazine. And as I welcome all of you to the program tonight, I also want to remind everybody, since we're very social media savvy here, we're hosting a Twitter chat right now, so go on Twitter right now and share your thoughts about this story with us. Hashtag Agenda TVO if you want to weigh in. The police chief in Toronto surprised a lot of people this morning when he said the following. Roll tape. I have been advised that we are now in possession of a recovered digital video file relevant to the investigations that have been conducted. That file contains video images which appear to be uh, those images which were previously reported into the, in the press uh, respect to, with respect to uh, events that took place, uh, we believe, at a house on Windsor Road in Etobicoke. That information has been turned over to our investigators uh, who are here today. The investigators have con taken con that information and that video evidence into consideration, and as a result of their investigations and evidence that they have gathered, they have this morning uh, taken into custody uh, a Mr. Sandro Lisi and laid a charge of extortion with respect to the evidence that has been collected. Mr. Lisi will be appearing, I believe, later today in court uh, in answer to that charge and all of the evidence that has been seized with respect to that investigation and that charge will be presented before the courts um, and I will not be releasing it today. Toronto Chief Bill Blair earlier today at a news conference. Okay, three different interests here that I think we want to examine somewhat. There is the mayor's personal and family interest, there is the interest of the city of Toronto writ large, and there is the interest of the institution of the mayor's office. And I want to have some discussion about what you think the mayor ought to do now as it relates to those three interests. As it relates to, Sue Ann, the mayor himself and his family, going forward, what do you think? Well, I, I, I'm going to talk about the mayor in general, and I've said this in my column that's going to be posted shortly. I think he should either seek help if he does indeed have, if he does have a drug problem, and or resign and step down. When you say resign, do you mean take a leave of absence or quit? Take a leave of absence and seek professional help and, if, and or resign. So that's where I'm you're at right step now. away. This is Step the, away from the chair. This is the Toronto Sun, which has been this one of its Sue biggest... This is of the Toronto Sun. Editorially, your paper's in the same place, though. Yeah. Well, we have, you know, we supported Rob Ford's fiscal agenda. And we were very open about that. I was very open about it. And we wanted to see fiscal sanity brought back to City Hall. But this has become a larger story. It's become a story about Rob Ford. It's not a story about the city. And I'm very disappointed. I lost my trust in him and as has the paper and I, I'm very disappointed because I thought he was going to change things at City Hall. Ivor, in terms of the mayor himself and his family, what next? Well, you look at the scene outside his house this morning where the media was camped out there and, and it's not a pretty scene, you know, this cannot be good for his family, it cannot be good for his home life, nothing in this, you know, appears to be good for any of them. I can't help but think if he had taken uh, the advice that was reportedly given to him by his chief of staff when this all, you know, when this all broke, which was step away, get help, go to rehab, he would be in a very strong political place right now. Uh, he would be coming back uh, into, you know, into office with the, the kind of glow of the, of the redeemed or the reformed and it, he'd be in, in a great position but he's stayed the course so doggedly and it only seems to lead to self-destruction. John. Well, I think that I agree with uh, Ivor. I think that he's personally in a tragic position. I mean, we're, this is Halloween night and I found myself thinking today about you know, is he going out with his kids? You know, what are the conversations? He did, he's incidentally. Had? He did go out he with, his kids, with his but, kids, but I mean, you know, there, everybody is talking about this. And uh, there are, there's a lot of detail in the uh, court documents that 
you know, didn't make the news that suggests somebody who's really in crisis. I mean, you know, going into the woods, into a park named after his father to drink, um, or allegedly to drink, um, getting back in the car and going off to do whatever. And I mean, it's, you know, it's sad. And, and so he needs to sort of move away from that. Let's and just clarify. You've seen the court documents. Yes. You read them today. Yes. How much time did you spend reading them? I spent much of the day reading them. So you, you didn't just have a cursory glance. You know what's in these things. Well, I don't know the uh, chapter and verse, but I spent quite a few hours looking at these things. What kind it. of a picture does it paint? Well, I mean, uh, the it, it paints a picture of a man who who's obviously preoccupied with these kind of tawdry details. I mean, he's a guy who's running a corporation that spends $10 billion of taxpayers' money every year. And um, there's a lot of detail that's involved in that job. There's a lot of you know, communication that's involved in that job. And he's talking to this driver many times during the day. You know, he's moving around. He's uh, you know, allegedly, you know, going into these gas stations, exchanging packages. I mean, it doesn't sound like the mindset of somebody who has this massive responsibility. Marcus, where are you on what Rob Ford should do now in terms of what's good for Rob Ford and his family? I think he's got to quit. I mean, uh, I think this was uh, what happened today was, was devastating. I mean, we had not only this extraordinary picture painted uh, in the uh, court documents, we had the chief of police confirming that there is a drug video, and it's the same video that didn't the didn't quite say that he didn't. Oh, he said he said they have a video that's a consistent video with the one that's reported in the Star. He, right. he came this close to saying it's the same okay. video. Remember that Rob Ford has said all along that the video does not exist. All right, we now know it not only exists. The police of chief chief of police says it exists. The authorities have it in their custody. So that's pretty devastating. Secondly, we have, the, as John says, this uh, comprehensive view of his reckless behavior since this. Remember that the Toronto Star and Gawker reported this uh, to the whole world. And after this, for months, he continued to meet with Sandra Lisi, now up on drug charges at gas stations and so on, mysterious exchanges. Wrote him a character reference. Scores of phone, phone calls, in one case 350 over the course of 44 days. Phone calls on the day that Anthony Smith, another gang member, was murdered. Uh, it paints a very shabby, ugly picture of a man who just has no self-discipline or control. And I just don't think, for his own sake and for the city's sake, he's got to go. Well, that's the next thing. In terms of what is best for the city of Toronto right now, the 416, Sue Ann? Well, I think I've said that. I mean, we. You know, I um, always support, I, let's put it this way, I didn't support him for mayor. Uh, I supported Rocco Rossi because I thought he was the best chance of, of putting ahead the fiscal agenda. He didn't connect. So I felt that Rob Ford was the best chance of moving this city along in a way that I felt it needed to be moved. But three years, when I left to go to Queen's Park four months ago, I was very happy to go because of the sideshow. I couldn't stand the sideshow anymore. I was disappointed with what had transpired, that his focus was not on that agenda. He'd made some very good his gains. His focus wasn't, but the agenda actually is happening, isn't it? Well, he'd made some excellent gains and contracted out garbage in my area. He had uh, got reined the budget under control. He had gotten a hold of the QP. He'd kneecapped the unions, I felt was very important. Unfortunately, it didn't go any further than that. And then everything became about Rob Ford and not about City Hall. All right, in terms of the city itself, Ivor, what needs to happen now? If he still, you know, if he, if he persists for the next year, then uh, the entire election is going to be a referendum on Rob Ford, which it always would be because he's the incumbent, but it's not going to be a referendum on his agenda. It's going to be a referendum on the man and on the kind of psychological profile of his supporters. And it's, 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 it's not going to be about anything that I think anyone really wants the election to be about. If he steps back now, um, we will have a clean slate uh, and we'll have a, a, an actual election of, of ideas, which is perhaps a, a hopelessly optimistic thing to hope for. Uh, but I think, I, I think we'd all benefit from a clean slate. John. So you talked about the city's interests. So the city doesn't have a single interest. There are many interests, many competing interests in the city. And um, the debates at City Hall kind of reflect those competing interests. And the thing is, is that Ford does not uh, deal in debate. 
he, you know, he, there's the circus around him, and uh, he, you know, he doesn't really, you know, ideas are not his stock and trade. And so, so there's this, the whole kind of program of local government and the debates around, you know, whether there should be, you know, uh, less taxes or more services or all these different things grind to a halt. And, you know, we're at a really important moment when there's some major issues to contend with. And it's totally sidetracked, right? This is all we talk about. Marcus, he did come out of his office for one minute and 10 seconds today right. to basically say, this is before the courts and I can't comment on it, although I'd love to comment on it. And then he said, I'm going to go back and make my phone calls and do my job. In terms of what's good for the city, Mayor Ford still thinks he's on the job. So is everything tickety-boo? It was a pretty extraordinary statement. First of all, his contention that it's all before the courts and he can't possibly comment is just wrong. I mean, he's not facing charges. Uh, he's free to say, I'm innocent. I didn't know, don't really know Lee C. and all these exchanges at the gas station were just uh, smarties or sandwiches or whatever. Uh, he's free to do that. He hasn't d done that. The problem is, it's hard to get Mr. Ford out of office if people want him out of office. If he insists on staying, there is no mechanism to remove him unless he's actually incarcerated and he, as he faces no charges so far. So uh, this is not a parliamentary system where the party uh, can no non overthrow a non-confidence motion, nothing like that. He's elected directly. So we're in a bit of a fix if he's decided to stick, decides to brazen it out. Here is, for those who didn't see it, the appearance that the Mayor of Toronto made today, albeit briefly, to explain his side of the issue. Roll tape, please. I think everybody's seen um, the allegations um, against me today. I, I, I wish I could come out um, and, and defend myself. Unfortunately, um, I can't because um, it's before the courts. And that's all I can say right now. What's going on? What's going on? Are you in the middle of it? Are you in the middle of it? I think it's quite. I think it's. I think it's. Why did you come out? No, 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 no. You know what? No, no. Uh, I have no reason to resign. I'm going to go back. I'm going to return my phone calls. I'm going to be out doing what the people elected me to do. And that's save taxpayers' money and run. A great government that we've been running for the last three years. I'm not sure, even at the White House, I've heard a news conference where the camera shutters were just going wham, 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 wham all the time. That was really something. Uh, what did you see there? <laughs> I think what I saw was uh, a man in a little bit of denial. I mean, you know, we talk about the job, okay? And the job doesn't just encompass returning phone calls. That's the problem. I mean, he's a very, very good retail politician. Mm -hmm. But you know, I will agree with my colleagues on this panel that he hasn't been able to coalesce, cancel, and defend, certainly as of late, some of the really strong items that he needed to get through council. And it's become a debate about, let's get Rob Ford. I don't necessarily agree that that's always been right. I think the attacks on him have been downright vicious by the me my media colleagues and by people on council. Inappropriately so? Inappropriately and abusive. Well, hang on, Sue so, Ann. You're saying you've all along said we were sort of jackals to go after Rob, Rob Ford and, mm -hmm. and being so, uh, asking all these impertinent questions. Now a lot of this seems to be factual. So I don't see why, you're, why, why we were jackals then and suddenly you're now saying he should quit. Well, I, th I think some of the commentary, Marcus, in fairness, was ab abusive. I mean, what, attacking him about KFC, attacking him about his weight. Um, I think I've never seen a mayor in my 15 years at City Hall that was so scrutinized, who was so attacked abusively, and I think bullied. I mean, bullied. It's a good thing he was scrutinized because well, now all not, this has come out. You know what? I'm not taking away from what happened in May. I never said, I never said that there wasn't a video. I said, show me the video and we'll talk. But I didn't enjoy the circus or the feeding frenzy. And that's what I was against. We have some feedback to all of what's transpired today. And let's just share this with you because uh, on Facebook, on Twitter, there are some people who've made some comments. Can we bring these up right now and just see what people have had to say about this throughout the course of the day? Do we have the, here's Pro Ford Reaction. This is Ed Costa via Facebook saying, Ford is our man. So what if he smoked a bit of dope? He's a good working boy. How about some more? 
What will the bloodthirsty hyenas over at the Toronto Star do now? We got one more. If the media hounded me the way they've hounded Rob Ford, I think I might need a few puffs on a crack pipe too. <laughs> okay, folks, this is Ford Nation. Yeah. John, is Ford Nation sticking with him come hell or high water? Well, I think that, you know, there's a, the fiction is, is that Ford represents the common person in the city who's conscious of their taxes, but I don't think the common person cuts out of work, goes to a park, drinks a bunch of vodka, and then gets back in their car. I think it's a, there's a there's a great disjunct there, there's a disconnect there, and I I you know I think that that's not you know we may have thought that that was what we were getting when we elected Ford, um, but he's a very distracted guy, and he's um, so yes there is this kind of um, there's this sort of support, but I think that once you know more of the detail about this comes in comes out you know it shows a guy who's not as connected to the ordinary voters. But Ivor, the question becomes, as more details come out, as they surely will, does that chip away at Ford Nation's love for this man? Richard Nixon had about 25% support uh, at around the time he uh, quit, finally. So there's always, there's always going to be people who, for one reason or another, identify personally, who think this is my guy, who want to support the underdog. I think we've made the mistake of talking about Ford Nation as if it was a monolith, right? As if everyone voted for Rob Ford for the same reason. They didn't, right? He cobbled together a coalition like any other politician. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, there's going to be a chipping away effect there, but there's always going to be that, that core of support. And that's just going to be there. And I don't think we should get too fixated on it. Marcus? A lot of people are uh, convinced that Mr. Ford is a victim. They buy that narrative that comes from him. I've been to a couple of his Ford Fests, and you talk to people, and, and uh, they say, first of all, they don't believe the crack allegation and so on. Second of all, if it were proven, they wouldn't care, you know, because he's and a good guy, and he's cutting our taxes. Because he's a good guy cutting our taxes. Yeah, yeah. and uh, they like the cut of his jib. He's a kind of authentic, regular guy, and they just... They just like him, damn it, and they're not going to let anybody tell them otherwise. The other thing, the other thing I heard uh, asking the same questions at the same events was that uh, one guy said to me, he said, you know what, if, if, if I had got caught you know, doing something like this and the media asked me if I'd done it, I'd say no too. Saying no was the, uh, you know, lying about it was the honest thing to do. <laughs> right? <laughs> Lying about doing drugs was the honest thing to do. From a certain perspective, because that's what, you know, that's what you'd do in that situation. Not you personally, of course, but the, the, second, the second person you would do in that situation. It was a relatable thing to do. It was not, say, a, a phony politician thing to do. The, the thing that, I, that I'm disappointed with is that he wrote in on this, I'm going to change City Hall, I'm going to make the City Hall more transparent and accountable. And you know, and, and I saw him over the years he was a counselor. He really tried to make a difference and bring out the spending abuses. But you can't, if you're going to say that, then you can't lie or allegedly lie about your involvement with drugs. And that's the thing that I'm disappointed, and I'm sure some of the people who voted for him in my circle would be disappointed about. But, but Sue Ann, mm -hmm. he lied about drugs in the middle of the 2010 campaign, and I think it was the son that caught him out on that. I wrote the story, actually. <laughs> there you go. But, I mean, it's not just the it's not just the drug use. I mean, there's the there's the lifestyle part. But what ha the other thing that happened today is that Lisi, the driver, uh, is charged with extortion. And so, uh, what I think is going to be really interesting is what where does that go, and what happens to his support when. Um, you know, if, if there's a charge against him that involves something more nefarious than just drinking, um, driving, and, you know, taking, taking these drugs, allegedly, um, you know, that's a sort of a different kind of, it takes it to a different level, I the, think. The charge is extortion, but do you have any more detail about what, in fact, he's alleged to have done? No, it hasn't come out yet. Um, I mean, it invol I mean it, it, it's involving the video um, and recovering the video. Gotcha. Uh, there's some more video we want to play. Uh, we have played Bill Blair, the Chief of Toronto, with his initial comments confirming the existence of the alleged video. Uh, we have seen the mayor emerge from his office and do about a minute ten on camera with uh, members of the Toronto media. And then there were further efforts later in the day to get the mayor to comment on this issue and the media showed up at his home, which he loves, as you know. So let's show that video and then we're going to have another person join us at the table here and talk some more. Roll tape, please. 
Can, can you get off my driveway, please? Can you get off my property, please? Can you get off my driveway, please? Can you please? Can you get off my driveway? Can you get off my property, please? Can you get off my property? I'm leaving. Can you get off my property? I'm leaving. Hey, thank you. Thank you very much. Get off my property. Thank you. Thank you very much. What do you understand? Get off the property, partner. Get off. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are you the focus of the Thank you. drug investigation Thank you. related to Sandra Thank you. Lisi, Mr. Mayor? Thank you. What will you tell us about Thank this you. release Thank you. today? Thank you. Okay, let's welcome to our table a uh, familiar face for TVO viewers, Jordan Peterson, the clinical psychologist from the University of Toronto. What did you see in that video of interest to you? Well, I think Rob Ford is probably essentially two people. And one of those people doesn't have very good judgment and has a problem with alcohol and drugs. Another person is working rather um, purposefully to do what he thinks is a good job. I think part of the reason he doesn't want to resign is because he doesn't want to let go of the part of himself that's trying to redeem his behavior by working diligently for the city of Toronto. I think people are not so surprised by his behavior because he's never claimed a kind of moral purity. He's more claimed the attempt to do something to clean up a certain kind of corruption or to put things in order. He's never claimed to be pure in his personal life, so there isn't that shock that there might be or that, that sense of the reprehensible that would go along with someone being pure caught out. He's not a televangelist, for example. Mm -hmm. um, can I just clarify here? You, I mean, your specialty is with people with addictions. However, I, I'm pretty sure you're not coming here tonight to say, I've diagnosed this guy having seen a minute of him on tape, and therefore I know he is. Or are you? No, I mean, I'm not saying that. I'm trying to understand what someone who's caught in such a mess of contradictions is like. And, you know, if you're a heavy user of alcohol, and at least a part-time user of drugs. Those things usually go along together. Um, what you do when you're not being the good person is kind of a haze. And then you wake up in the morning and you have a shower and you clean all that stuff off you and you think, well, I better like, get my act together today and do something right. And then you try that real hard for a few days and you know the pressure gets to you or you don't eat enough or you're a little hungover and the temptations that he's been you know, associated with his whole life, come back to haunt him, and bang, he's back in the bottom of the barrel again. And it's like, it's a continual, in this sort of situation, that kind of rise and fall is common. Can you make a judgment? I, I you know, this is your specialty, so yeah. you tell us. Based on what you've seen over the course of his three years of mayor, and maybe his 10 years prior as a city councillor, and what you know about the events of today, can you come to a well, conclusion one the, about him? One of the criteria for diagnosing someone with, a, with an alcohol abuse problem, and, and I'm not diagnosing him with that, is the expression of concern on the part of people who care. Now, I don't know enough about his personal drinking habits or his personal drug use habits to know what he's doing in terms of consumption, but I do know that his pattern of behavior has been sufficiently um, regular so that people from all sorts of that he's associated with in all sorts of ways some for him and some against him have commented multiple times that he's done things that made him appear out of control and that cast doubt on the respectability of the mayor's office I think his supporters think that he's not a good guy who's really trying hard to be a good guy and that in some ways he's really succeeding and I think that they don't see much sympathy for the good part of him being displayed in the press, with who they're not that fond of anyways. And so they have a lot of sympathy for him in, in the same way that Albertans had sympathy for Ralph Klein. Gotcha. Swan, you wanted in. Yeah, a couple of things. Um, <clears throat> I've watched him. I had the benefit of watching him for 10 years, and he did have emotional and explosive outbursts. And I'm not blaming the media, but I, he managed to control himself and rein himself in to run for mayor. Certainly not blaming the media or, or excusing his behavior, I should say. But I would say, I mean, I, you joked about that, that Twitter thing, but I think that the pressure of the job and the constant scrutiny did drive him back into 
that. And I think he honestly wants to do what's right. I really do. And that's why I defended him. You know, that's why I, I found, the, you know, the scrutiny by the media, the, the, the voracious, the voracious appetite to get him, whatever. I found that, I mean, David Miller never got that kind of scrutiny. The okay, mayor. Yes, the former mayor. Never got that kind of scrutiny. I certainly never, I disagreed with everything he did, everything politically. I never showed up at his house. I never, you know, stood on a fence in the backyard, examined his garbage can. Miller was quite accessible to media and people, though, in a way that the current not, mayor is not. You know, but he was given a free ride when it came to certain, certainly his personal life. Nobody dealt with it. Well, there was no evidence there was of any of this. Nothing in his personal well, life you know, that we knew of. I, I'm not going to talk about, but okay. there's always... But let's, Ivor, talk to this for a second here. And sadly, we just got a few minutes left here, but... Uh, you know, you can understand why some people, for example, in Ford Nation, would see the way the media were there, mm -hmm. going on his property, yeah. you know, yelling questions at him, and be sympathetic to the mayor, couldn't you? Yep, I can see that, absolutely. Uh, and, but it, it works both ways. You know, the media attention uh, to Ford, and the media has been, uh, because he's been so inaccessible and because there's been these stories around him, have followed him to every public event that he's done. Rob Ford shows up someplace, the media's right there. That's given him a huge platform. It's given him a huge megaphone, not a word that he says goes unreported. And so, in a way, it, it actually provides a bit of a, a structural bias in his favor, I think. Jordan. If you don't like someone and you chase them down for their vices, that doesn't make you trustworthy. And I, and I think that's how his supporters view the press. They, I don't think they, as a general rule, doubt the accuracy of the accusations, but they doubt the motivations behind the accusations. And they feel that his, the people who are pointing out the flaws in his personal behavior are doing so not so much because they care about the flaws in his personal behavior, but because it seems like a convenient way to drag him down. Bingo. And Bingo. So, and so um, I don't think people find that, I don't think they regard that as honest. They think there's something crooked going on underneath the the self-righteousness. And it's not like his behavior is acceptable. It's, it's not acceptable, but it may be that it's no more not acceptable to his, to his fans than the behavior of the people who are trying well, to drag him down. Marcus, let me give you the last 30 seconds on this, which is as, as badly as Mayor Ford has behaved in public from time to time, it may be that people think the behavior of the media is worse and therefore are intent, you know, inclined to cut him a little slack. Is that possible? They may, they may feel that. I've certainly heard many people say we're haunt, hounding him. But in retrospect, just looking back on all this, wouldn't it be better if we'd actually been tougher on him? Wouldn't it be better if when he was running for mayor, people look in, into his background? We already knew there were troubling signs. Uh, this famous rant at the Air Canada Centre, uh, drunken rant and other problems in his life. If we'd looked into his background, into his behaviour, he might never become mayor and we might not be here. So I think it's a little unfair to say the media sort of hounded him to his political grave. Gotcha. Uh, folks, thanks so much for coming in tonight and helping us out with this, as they say, to be continued. Support Ontario's public television. Donate at tvo.org.